debt talks with Vice President Biden are resuming today. He wants tax hikes as GOP counterparts are demanding spending cuts. But there are other tax fights on Capitol Hill raging uh, right now. My next guest is leading the charge to get rid of the absurd tanning bed tax implemented to help pay for the monstrosity known as Obamacare. Here now is New York Republican Congressman and good friend of Freedom Watch, Michael Grimm. Congressman Grimm, uh, it's a pleasure. Good to can, see you, can, Judge. Can they be serious that they want to help pay for this march towards socialized medicine by taxing kids when they go to tanning beds? Oh, they're, they're more than serious. They're doing it. Let's be very clear. The president said there would be only taxes on millionaires and billionaires, those over 200 and, and families over 250,000. But yet, uh, there's 18,000 small businesses, tanning salon owners, they are getting hit with a 10% tanning tax, and that affects mostly women and college students. Right. Not only does it affect them with the taxes, Judge, but what about the fact that they also hire a lot of these college students so that they can get by to get through school, and that's less jobs we're creating. All right. My question to you may have been a little uh, misleading. The, the tanning bed tax is already the law. That's right. Okay, what are you guys going to do about it to uh, let people use this and to let them be more prosperous so they can hire kids to work in these places? Well, I just dropped legislation that repeals it. And that, and that goes along with my promise. I promised when I was a candidate right. that I would repeal Obamacare and or defund it. This will go to the heart of defunding it. It's $2.7 billion in new taxes to the heart of the middle class. Okay, some of these uh, efforts to uh, defund part of it or to repeal part of it has actually worked. The 1099 thing, the right. requirement for all small businesses that when they spend more than $600 a year on one vendor, they have to send a form to the IRS. It would have been some uh, absurd, absurd number of forms. Uh, you guys got that through and the president signed it. Will he sign this repeal of the tanning bed tax or is he somehow wedded to this nonsense? You know, I don't think he's wedded to this particularly. And I think that the feedback from small business has been incredible. We've gotten an incredible response because this really does go to the heart of, again, right now there's a lot of underemployment. So a, a small business like a tanning salon provides those extra hours for someone that can get a secondary job to supplement their underemployment status as of right now. All right. Um, tell me about entitlement reform. Everybody knows. You, you don't have to read all of Paul Ryan's works. If we don't do anything to Medicare, it will be bankrupt. That's a fact. Everybody knows that 10,000 a day baby boomers are joining the Entitlement you Society, the Social Security, and Medicare. Medicare. So what do you think is the best we can hope for, given that the Democrats control the Senate, the president is a left-leaning Democrat, and the Republicans control the House of Representatives? Well, the crisis time is now. What are we going to get out of this? To be honest with you, Judge, I think we're actually going to get something done because the, the economy really is the most important thing for this president to be reelected, and he recognizes that. Right. So I think he knows that we have to raise the debt ceiling or it could very have a, a tremendous impact on the economy. So I think that he's going to give us as much as he possibly can to get this debt well, ceiling Well, what raised. can that be? You're going to let him borrow money as long as he stops spending it? I mean, well, it's like tr trusting a drunk with booze. Well, actually, it's, it's about cutting this, the, the credit cards. What we need to do is not only cut spending, but have real systemic reforms going forward, so that, like, such as spending caps and so right, forth. Right, but do you believe him that he would spend less in the future if you let him borrow more now? Or... Don't you, do you recognize that this Congress and this president can't bind future Congresses and future presidents no matter what President Obama promises? I do, but I don't trust that the president will just keep his word to say, I'll spend less. I think that we have to put in real reforms, whether it be a balanced budget amendment, but real steps forward so that he cannot borrow more. Right. That's the goal. We have to reduce the spending. I realize Congress is off this week. You've been in New York while the Wiener scandal has been unfolding. He's a colleague of yours in yes. the New York uh, delegation. Will he be a colleague of yours a week from now? Oh, I have, I have no idea. I mean, there's no way I could answer that question. That's, only, that's a question, really, that only Congressman Wiener can answer. And, you know, to be honest with you, Judge, I... I didn't comment when it was my colleague on the, on the Republican side, Chris Lee, right. and therefore I, I've reserved comment uh, with my Democratic colleague as well. But at some point you may have to vote as to whether or not this brings the House into uh, disrepute. Right. Well, that's a different story. If, the, if, if it goes to the floor based on ethics rules, uh, you know, obviously then I would have a vote. All right. Uh, Congressman Michael Grimm, it's always a pleasure. Great to Thank see you. Thank you for Judge. joining us. Why you can feed the birds but not the homeless in Orlando, Florida. It's true. That's next.